I'm gonna try and do a brewing video with actual brewing stuff. So, one-handedly, I'm just finishing off uh, a pound of carapils in these flimsy farmhouse bags. A little weird. So, here's what we're gonna do. Um, I have a contest to go to, I don't know if it's a contest, it's a festival. Uh, up in Fond du Lac, which is a little town in Wisconsin, uh, a few guys are gonna go up and we get to pour homebrew at uh, this festival. So I'm gonna throw together a little raw Kvi Kazi IPO, oh, I said the word. Go back, scratch that. A raw Norwegian farmhouse inspired Kazi IPA. Um, I know I said the word wrong, that's why I'm never gonna say it again. Shit. Anyway, uh, let's brew some beers. All right, so let's talk grain bill. Um, for this beer, um, I happen to have Beersmith directly behind you, so it's kind of convenient. Um, I'm kind of clearing out some malt. I thought I had more um, Golden Promise-y, two row -y stuff. Um, I have like four and a half pounds of Golden Promise. I think it's actually Halcyon, but close enough. Um, and I also have a bunch of Pilsner, so what we're doing here is like a 50-50 grain bill of Pilsner malt and um, English two-row, basically. Um, and then we're going to do a little bit of Carapils, just for a little bit of sweetness. This Kvik really can drive shit pretty dry, so I want to keep a little bit of sweetness. Um, I have two pounds of oats, flaked oats, and two pounds of white wheat. Wheat. So... I think it's going to be a cool beer. Um, I've done these kind of raw IPAs a few times before. I like the way they come out. Um, and if you want a hazy beer, don't boil it because then none of the protein falls out and it stays hazy. So um, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to run some water. Um, I'll probably run the uh, brewing water sheet and I'm going to bump the uh, chloride up quite a bit. Um, Try and get a little bit of that soft mouth feel that that uh, the sulfide to chloride, sulfate to chloride ratio will give you, and uh, that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna figure that stuff out. I will pop back in. I'm gonna try and make an actual kind of decent brewing video um, about these raw IPAs that I have so fallen in love with. So um, yeah, hang tight, nerds. Let's talk water. Um, so for my water which I've had tested it so well. I'm not sure how, I probably, sh I need to get it tested again. Um, but what I'm going to adjust this particular batch with is some canning salt and some calcium chloride. So calcium chloride, ah damn my scale turned off. My cocaine scale. Okay, so I'm gonna go four grams in the mash and four grams in the sparge of calcium chloride. Typically, I way overshot. I have fairly hard water as it is, so I don't generally need to add a ton of this stuff. Um, but it's fun, so why not? And then we're going to do a gram here of our canning salt to get a little more sodium. And that's it. That's all I'm doing for the mash of this one, except lactic acid. Um, I'll adjust pH with six milliliters of lactic acid. Um, typically that's about what I have to add uh, for the mash, between five and seven somewhere, uh, depending on what, uh, what the grain bill is. Since this is so light, I have to add a little more. If it's a dark grain bill, it's typically a little less. So um, it's not all that much. I feel like some people probably have to put a lot more in. Uh, definitely if you were building water from scratch, I think you'd have to put way more in. So, um, I have the water heating, this is going to go in, acid goes in, and then we wait, and then we mill. Alright, so here's our, whoa, here's our grist, um, pretty good crush, I think. Um, at least I like where my crush is. We're also going to rely a little bit on the Quaker Oats Man to, uh, just round this bad boy out a little bit. So, here we go. Quaker Oats. Love it. Uh, water's about up to temp. We'll do a little 
mash stirring action and uh, a little brew some beers. Okay, so this is super irritating. I just recorded this nice little video about hops and beer and everything, and then as soon as I hit stop, it said, but warning, recording failed. That's stupid, Android. Screw you. Um, okay, so let's run through it again and see what happens. Um, so basically where we're sitting right now, we've mashed. Um, I've ru I've, first runnings are off. I'm not going to teach you guys about mashing because you're all smart brewers. Um, what we are going to do is continue to drink this uh, hazy IPA. It's actually the last hazy IPA I made in the same kind of method, the raw, um, no boil kind of IPA. Um, this one was made with the Hornendal strain of Norwegian inspired farmhouse yeast. Um, and this one, if you ferment it super hot, this one I pitched at 95 and ramped it to over 105. Um, it goes crazy orange peel citrus. Um, and in this beer, this is like a citrus, kind of a citrus bomb IPA. Um, I leaned into that pretty hard with uh, Mandarina Bavaria, Medusa, and Azaka. Azaka, Azaka, Azaka. Um, to really push the orangey, citrusy thing. And it totally worked. Um, it's almost a little bit too pithy, but... It really has kind of a, a an authentic orange character, which I really like. That between the yeast and the hops, it's a it's a good play. Um, what we're gonna do for this beer, we're actually gonna ferment it with a different strain of yeast. Here it is. We're gonna go with the OALO 61 Voss strain, uh, which I haven't used before, so it's gonna be exciting. Um, I'm gonna try not to run it quite so hot. I'm gonna try and pitch at 90-ish and ferment it at 80, you know, let it free fall to 80 or do whatever it really wants to do, but. But I know with this strain I've read, you need to keep it hot to get to keep it motivated. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drop some hops in this bitch. We already dropped them, you saw that but then you didn't see it. So, um, we have here a a new pound of crispy uh, 2018 citras from Farmhouse because all the hops from Farmhouse are the greatest. This is gonna be a good year for citra. This stuff smells freaking amazing. Um, so, I dropped five ounces first wort hop in this because basically what you're getting out of this is you're getting your I'm gonna get any bittering we're gonna get I'm gonna drop it now um, sparge everything off and then I'm gonna throw it on the burner and bring it up just to the boiling point and then kill it so I want some of this disomerize I want some bitterness out of it but I also want a big extended whirlpool and doing a first wart let it come up and then let it fall back down you're sort of getting the best of both worlds out of that single hop charge. So I'm looking for a lot of flavor and I'm also looking for a little bit of bitterness. Maybe up to like 30 IBUs is kind of all I want out of these beers because I like them super hoppy but not super bitter. Like this one, um, maybe even a little bit too bitter, but I think a lot of that is just because it's so so citrusy that the bitterness comes off like like the white part of uh of citrus fruit which for being a citrus bomb ipa totally works so we've already got five ounces of hops in there i'm gonna sparge the rest of this thing off and uh then we'll see we'll see what happens All right so we're bringing her up to a boil um it's kind of all there is to it for now um, I know there's probably some like, oh my god, you're gonna get DMS because there's Pilsner malt and it's gonna taste like cooked corn. I don't know why, it doesn't happen. Uh, so, I don't know, but it, it seems to work. And I have never gotten crazy off flavors from this. Uh, I've never gotten like, I don't know, anything. I get good, tasty, cloudy beers. Um, 
So, that's all I have to say about that. It's gonna be good. And it's very pretty out here today. Uh, you know, it's fucking cold, but whatever. It's winter. All right, we've been heating this thing for a couple minutes. I feel like we are just at the edge of boil. If I drop my phone right now, it would just suck out loud. Um, it smells like ridiculous out here. So the Citra is doing its thing. I could keep that in a straight line. That'd be cool. Um, so I'm just going to wait till this thing starts to break the surface. Uh, and then I'm going to kill it. So there it is right there. Let's kill it. Get it that far all the liquid should be up around 210 or so just so the top starts to move then i know everything in there is dead and uh away we go cheers nerds so got the chiller in uh basically i'm gonna sit here and i'm just gonna whirlpool this thing for like 45 minutes um i'm not gonna turn the chiller on it's not even actually plugged in any water right now um i'm just gonna keep coming over stirring it every few minutes and uh oh man my phone's almost dead i should really plug it in um so 45 minutes cheers nerds all right so we're done with our 45 minute chill um just kicked the chiller on it, it it free fell down about 165 over 45 minutes so mm, it still smells like citra -y goodness which is nice um so we're going to chill this thing down to about 95 degrees. I'm going to pitch at 95. I'm going to throw it in that fermentation chamber right there. Um, I'm probably going to set the, the heater on that thing to about 85. So I'm going to pitch it at 95. We're going to let it sort of do its thing. Um, if the Hornendal is any indication, this thing is going to go ape shit nuts right away. So just in that environment this thing is going to be fermented out in days um i should probably take a gravity reading of this thing quick and uh we'll see what that looks like boom so there is the gravity 1065 or so maybe 1064 um you know i like it that's about where i was shooting um we're looking for about a 6.8 7 percent ish kind of beer um efficiencies and gravities are always a little weird when you're not boiling any liquid off so you just kind of have to deal with it it's not the biggest deal in the world unless you're really one of the guys that gotta hit my numbers and i gotta hit an exact 6.74 abv uh that's not me so that's like making tasty beers what are you gonna do um so all in all so far i think we're sitting good okay so beer is chilled down to 95 degrees um i did uh throw it in a carboy threw the voss uh yeast on it and uh dropped it off in the chamber over there the other thing i typically do with these kvikis because ugh, i said it again uh they typically i from everything i've read i'm still experimenting a lot with them but they like to be under pitched so I didn't make a starter, I didn't do any of that stuff. And then the last little bit in the packet, I put in a just a jar starter. It's not on a stir plate or anything. Um, and typically, those things will kick off and go freaking bananas. Um, and you'll end up, it, it's like you can just remake yeast out of this stuff. It's crazy. Um, which is economical, so saving you money. Um, so cheers, nerds. This is actually a different beer. Mmm. This is a Brett Table beer. I might have talked about this on a video at some other point. Um, I really need to bottle one of these off and shoot it back to Portland to my boy Shilpy at uh, Logston Farmhouse Ales. Because he was the literal most accommodating and awesome brewer I've ever talked to, I think. Um, Jake and I talked to that guy and he was super rad. He sent us the most detailed recipe I've ever seen for any beer from anywhere, which was cool. Uh, hey Google, turn it down. Oh, that's gonna jack up the camera, I bet. 
maybe not. Maybe I said it too fast, so it's not going to... Whatever. Listen to the atmosphere at the same time as we talk about beer. It's fine. So, I'm going to wrap the video up here. That thing is going to go nuts overnight. Uh, typically, these Norwegian yeasts, they ferment like crazy. Uh, they are angry and pissed off and they're ass kickers. So, we're sitting at 30 degrees Celsius in that uh, fermentation chamber, which is 85 or so. Um, the wort came out of the kettle at 95. Figure splash around, probably cooled down a few degrees. So we're probably pitching at about 92, 93 maybe, um, which is plenty warm. Um, and I still have a little room. If I if, if I don't think it's working hard enough, I can flog it and I can ramp the temperature up still. So um, I'm really still trying to work the kind of the levels of heat with these yeast to not like I want them to run fast because the fat they will run crazy fast. But I don't want to push the crazy, crazy citrus maybe with this one. I want to restrain it a little bit and let the citra and mosaic um, in the dry hop kind of shine harder. So, Anyway, there's a little run through of a, uh, of a raw IPA brew day. Um, it's super simple. There's nothing to it. And anyone can do it. And I believe it makes super tasty beers. So, uh, if you're chasing the Hayes Nation life, um, Ryan's got his strategies, some apples in the mesh, and um, some other secret Hayes Nation tricks. This is kind of my lane of the Hayes Nation world. Uh, high mineral content, no boil, keep all the protein you can keep in your beer in your beer. It glows, that's crazy. I suppose the the shop lights don't hurt but um so yeah I'll, I'll keep you guys updated on this thing maybe we'll shoot some video up at uh at a Fond du Lac too so that'd be that'd be cool um maybe see some some homebrew nerds that we haven't seen in a while I'm looking at you Tyler you svelte mother just Tyler's been killing it in the world and uh I hope I can catch up with him in Fond du Lac I'm not sure yet but we'll see I'm really hoping Elder P will figure out how to make the trip up. It's not that far from your house, Elder. And we could have a hell of a good time. Um, yeah, so anyway, yeah, I do nerds. There's how you make a beer without uh, really making a beer. You kind of cut out a lot of the long steps. So uh, it works good. Cheers, nerds. <sighs> Happy Homebrew Wednesday. George Jones. <laughs>